There you go. Not too close. So here again, immediately, I always want to look for the highlight. I always want to look for the highlight. I always want to look for a little bit of shadowing, you know, because again, that gives me a sense of confidence that the eye has that, a little bit of sense of fullness. As far as everything else, you know, again, I'm going to pencil everything in. Now with this caricature here, I'm going to stroke it with a Sharpie once everything is drawn in. And then I'm going to add color. So again, as far as like why add a Sharpie? Well, it's because I want to make it look a little bit more illustrative. I want it to make it look more precise. I want it to make it look a little bit more clear. And again, I'm not going to do all the fancy shading. I'm not going to do all the fancy shading that I did with the realistic one. I'm going to keep it a little bit more minimal. As far as your brows, I knew know that they go beyond the beginning. They're a little bit further out. So again, as far as from here, they go all the way back. Now, a lot of people that do caricatures, like you see them at theme parks and stuff like that, Sometimes they are the victims of, I don't know, whether it be kind of laziness or they've done too many and, uh, but they don't really don't look at the people no more. They kind of like, well, that's what I've noticed. They kind of just stare at the drawing way, way too long. They grab a couple of things that is very, very distinct about the person. And then from there, they just kind of just do their own little thing. But that's what I've noticed about you know, a lot of caricature artists. But again, it's very, very much so a portrait and people, of course, that do caricatures, you know, I do applaud them. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. It can definitely be very, very fun. But uh, definitely, again, you have to, of course, you know, you have to spend a lot of time looking. That's the most important thing. Because the last thing you want someone to do when they you do draw a portrait of someone is tell you that, eh, this didn't look like me. So as soon as they say that, you know, your confidence is in the dirt. You know, you really don't feel like trying again, or you're vice versa. So, well, let me try again. Let me try again. So that's a good attitude. Would you guys be hurt if someone told you that? Like you drew a portrait of them and then they tell you, no, it doesn't look like me at all. I would get mad. <laughs> you would get mad? Well, like I'm an art, well, you know, I can draw and stuff. And there is always a question, can you draw me? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, not if you're going to be ugly. <laughs> not, if <laughs> not if you're going to be ugly about it, if it doesn't come out good. Yeah, and like, I'm drawing my sister, and she's like, oh, I'm so ugly. And like, yeah, that's why I choose you. <laughs> but like, it's not that. Because that's the thing, because people will say, ah, that doesn't look like me, or ah, you need to. Well, I mean, sometimes me. people don't even know what they look like themselves, you know. You they know. Just, you know, a, a glamorized version. But okay. So I'm going to try to do this one and see how it goes. And uh, I think it'll come out okay. It's just a matter of, you know, getting there kind of close to there. I'm pretty sure Lydia's going to be cringing all the way through, like, oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. <laughs> Like, like I'm trying. I'm trying to think of it. It was like a, um, like a troll or something. I, I think it was in the nineties. I feel uh -huh. like that's what I look like. The troll doll. Yeah, they were like little furry ones with big eyes. Oh, do you have big eyes? The what? Do a lot of people say that you have large eyes? Uh, yeah, occasionally, but they're very uh, lazy. Yeah, that's what I noticed about your eyes. Is they just seem to have nice size to them. As far as the, the lower eyelid does drop, you know, making it seem like it's larger, but your eyes are halfway shut or a portion, a portion, a portion anyways. But again, as far as the eyes, I think this is okay. You know, eventually I'll come back and kind of clean it up a little bit. I need to make the people a little smaller. But definitely you want to make sure the eyes are proportioned to each other or at least symmetrical to each other. So I can always look at one or the other. Even when I draw one, I say, well, let me try to make the other one kind of similar, especially if the person's looking fairly much at you. Now again, this one here, is she's turning a little bit to the right. So as far as the nose, I cannot draw it dead center. If this is dead center, I need to move the nose just a little bit this way, just wiggle it out. Now, last time we didn't talk about noses, but when you draw a nose, again, it's this nice ball. She has a very, very nice ball of the nose. And again, it's very, very curvy. So again, what I want to do is I want to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a very soft ball. You know, just very, very soft.
but I'm going to utilize the bottom line. Now, as far as, again, it's not completely round. It has like a little bit of a point at the end and it turns this way a little bit and then it quickly turns back and around. As far as this side over here, it just goes back up like this. There's going to be some nice soft shading that travels underneath it like this. And it comes upwards around the side and then up here at the top, you know, a little bit more shading. But again, my eyes are looking backwards and forwards like every one, every one second to every two seconds. I mean, I'm always looking backwards and forwards and I'm just looking for the line. I'm looking for the information. And when things are going well, you know, it's like everything's going well. As far as the bottom of the nose is right here. So this has to be a little bit higher. I always have a tendency to want to draw the nostril too low. So again, this side's okay, but this side is too low. So I'm just gonna pick it up a little bit. And this side's gonna come around this way a little bit. Now, as far as the nose is not big, but I may make it more petite. So again, as part of the caricature, I think I have to do that because it's too big. So again, normal nose, that would have been that big, but the caricature nose is gonna be smaller. Hi, sir. Um, I'm on my phone right now, but I'm gonna run out of battery. I, I'm in the meeting room in my laptop. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. But you guys have been turning in some really good stuff as far as your samples, uh, really, really good. Like Jordy's uh, perspective drawing was amazing. Some really, really nice drawings from everybody. So that's awesome. It's awesome to see that you guys are getting a good product. And again, uh, my hope is that someday you'll be able to be more creative with your drawings. So again, I do have uh, students in other classes and when I do ask them to be more creative, sometimes they kind of forget about all their techniques and forget about all the things that they've learned. Uh, and it kind of just goes out the door. But again, as far as drawing well, you know, that gives you structure. That should give you a sense of confidence, you know, to go into almost anything. But again, you need to make sure that you adapt it to your creativity too. Here the lip, the lower lip seems pretty pronounced. We'll try to do that. As far as the chin, fairly rounded. This is where the, the well, maybe a little bit lower. So as far as on this side of the face, there's a little bit more so. So as far as what I do want to try to get is this chin. Till it looks. So 
So again, when you can draw the cards for us, make sure you try to draw them long. The last thing you want to do is do a little scratchy, scratchy. So again, you want to make sure you always turn the paper, try to turn it to the curve. Have an idea where you want that curve to go. As far as any little marks, she has only one little tiny mark right there, but that's about it. As far as a neck, if I was to draw a neck, you know, depending if her body's moving this way or that way. As far as her hair, you know, I have a lot of room for the hair. But again, long strokes. As far as when you do draw hair, we didn't discuss hair, but hair has to be all about the rhythm. When you draw one line, you have to draw at least four or five other lines that go along with it. If your lines get really, really scattered, uh, it's gonna look like a mess. So again, when you do draw lines within hair, you have to do one, two, three, four, as many as you possibly can, but you need a little sense of rhythm to the lines or else the hair is gonna look very, 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 like not brushed at all. It's gonna look very sloppy. So whenever you do draw some lines, you have to make sure that the lines are working together, working together. So again, you wanna have a sense of rhythm as they move around. And again, as far as like, you know, just like the lips, you know, the lines in the middle would make you a little bit straighter as they start going to the right or the left, depending if that person has curvy hair, wavy hair, it depends. There's a lot of different types of hair. Again, you need to try to keep that nice rhythm. If you lose that rhythm, the hair is gonna look, uh, again, very, very unbrushed, ungroomed. What questions do you guys have? Did you guys find someone to draw as a caricature? Are you guys eating sandwiches? I'm actually doing the leaves. I'm going back to them, but like, I I hate the, uh, the Los dientes. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know why they're so yellow. Well, when you do draw the teeth, the idea is when you do draw the teeth, you know, so you, of course, like again, I usually like to tone the, the mouth. I'll get an idea of the, of the center. They go when someone is smiling, you know, I kind of go upwards a little bit, but I shade the mouth. I try not to draw the lips. When I still come across the teeth, you know, I start, of course, drawing around the teeth. I draw around the teeth. I try to draw the, I try to shade the gums a little bit. So very, very softly, I'll come back and I'll work my way around. And I'll work my way around. And again, eventually, if a person's smiling a lot with an open mouth, you know, I'll do a little bit more. But eventually, down in the back, you know, you darken up a little bit. But you know, I try to bring out the teeth very, very subtly and not try to draw them. If you draw them too much, it, it, the the teeth look like little squares. Man, I don't see a good sharpie. I do have a good sharpie coming. Let me look for a sharpie super, super, super quick. One point.
Hunter Marcus. Yay. So is, does it make you nervous working with markers a little bit, you know, because again, you can't take it off. So again, when I do stroke the lines with a marker, just try to keep it clean, try to go in the direction of the features. As far as the way I would handle the eyes, I'd usually draw a highlight and then I darken in the people and then I do a little transition. Just a few little lines to kind of work my way downwards. As far as the eyelids, eyelashes, And then you have very, very small lines. As far as the small lines, I could probably use a finer pin, like a Sharpie, a finer Sharpie, extra fine point. As far as the brow, The nose. Now here I can imitate I do I some ideas of shading where I'll put the shading later, but I don't know if I want to do it with uh, hatching marks or cross hatching. It may be too heavy. You can also do a little bit of fine dots, like a little bit of ideas of stippling. As far as the lips themselves, you know, you can do more. This is a bottom lid. I try not to define it too much. Even the little cupid's bow, I'll put a little bit of detail. As far as the outer contour, I try to keep it kind of close and make the lines as clean as long as I can. Sometimes I'll work it to a little dot, work my way back to a fuller line. So here I just kind of just fade it out a little bit. As far as the eyelashes, you try to go a little bit heavier, then try to lift at the last minute to try to make the lines look like they get a little bit thinner at the very, very end. As far as better markers of these are the brush tip pins. Do you guys have any brush tip pins? You guys ever heard of brush tip pins?
they're pretty good. They give you a really nice artistic quality to it because of the tapering of line. So the line tapers from a fat to a thin and it gives you a really nice quality. As far as the hair, I get really excited to do the hair it's because I get, get to start working my contour. But again, I want to make sure that I'm looking at the direction as, as to what is going on. So here I'm going to go inwards and outwards. Again, using a lot more shoulder movement so I can have a little bit more freedom. And then whenever I can use my wrist, I'll work my wrist into the lines. But again, I try to have a nice rhythm to the stroke. So sometimes when I have to turn the paper, all the way around. So some parts here are definitely they're more instinctual, you know, depending where you feel like you need a little more contrast or add a little more of this or a little bit less line. So as far as the bags, they look okay. As far as the rest, I need to start sweeping some lines over. Some areas may look too gray, so you go back and make them darker. You want to get a little bit of a fade as far as like some of these lines don't look like they're going anywhere so I try to give them all a little a destination. As far as the eyeglasses I do want to draw them in. As far as the directions of the light, how I kind of move the glare this way, I'd like to do it the same on this side too. So yeah, working with the lines kind of brings you back to the very first week of school, the first couple of weeks of school, when you're using Sharpies every day. And you, you're probably thinking, what am I gonna use Sharpie ever again?
So one of the tricky parts here is to try to get the hair to move from under the glasses to the bangs. So again, straighter in the middle, rounded to the this side. So get rhythm, try to get that nice rhythm. So the hair looks nicely brushed. That was a nice series of lines of rhythm. You see how the hair really flows really nice when you have it nicely, you know, all the lines working together. And then by instinct, some areas you darken up some more and some areas you keep a little bit lighter. Some areas you show the line work and some areas you just kind of just kill it and just make it all nice and dark depending on what you think is gonna look good. So again, as far as trying to interpret hair one at a time, it's impossible. It's more about, I guess, clumps, you know, strands, large strands. And again, when you do look at someone's hair, you can definitely see there's a strand of hair goes this way, 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 strands of hair that goes this way. So she has one, two, three strands moving this way, one long strand moving this way, some strands from underneath moving this way. So here I try to get a little bit of the same idea of movement, moving, moving. So where I create a little bit more depth for the strand is to go darker behind it to try to create a sense of layering, a sense of heaviness, a little sense of thickness. As far as in the back side here, there's gonna be a lot of heavy shade in here underneath the chin. When I darken in here, it definitely brings out the contrast, really bring out the shape of the face. 
Professor, do you have any um, advice on uh, creating eye bags? Eye bags is just like a little bit of shading. It's mostly going to be in the shading, unless you see the eyes very, very strong. You know, so that's going to be a part of the of the caricature. So again, if you had someone's eyes, you know, and again, they look tired, you know, you bring down the eye, and of course, this one goes down more. As far as the eyes here, like this. As far as the eye bag, you know, it's going to be more like a little bit, maybe like a ring, a line within a line, a little bit of shading underneath the line, you know, just kind of bring out the idea that there is a bag. If you want to bring it out like very, very fine details, you know, you bring it out from the outer edge, you bring it in. Like this would be the highlight here. Let me eat this up. So usually an eye bag would be something like that. And of course the eye itself would droop. Then of course you have all of this up here. You have you do have like these folds that move around the eye up here on top. But of course in here you have you know maybe one little line. You can kind of wiggle it a little bit. You can do it with another second little line, and you, you wiggle it up some more. But under here is where you can put some shading, some little hatching marks, to kind of bring out that it sticks out beyond. Oh, he looks like he's crying. As far as when someone's eyes are dropping, you know, their, their eyelids, or if you want to incorporate eyelashes, but the eyelid you need to fall under, you go underneath. Okay, let's see. So that'd be the idea of like little eye bags kind of moving downwards. <clears throat> Looks like a very sad eye. <clears throat> what kind of body are we going to give uh, Lydia? What do you do, Lydia, as, as your recreation? What do you mean? What do you do for fun? Um, like drawing ones? No, like what do people know you for? Like your friends, they say that you do what? Like oh. what do you do? Um, I don't know. Like, are you into sports, um, like music, um, dance? Uh, I think I'm pretty funny. You're a funny person? Yeah. As far as drawing bodies, uh, let me show you an idea how to draw bodies. So as far as an animated body, the idea is to draw like an animated face. Bodies are very expressive too. They're very, very goofy. They're very, very funny. They can be very, very serious. And definitely can tell a lot about a person by the body expression, the way they're standing, the way they're sitting, you know, they're slouching or standing upright. But again, a lot of us have a hard time making it look fluid. So one of the best ways of drawing a body, and again, it can be more realistic or it can be more animated. What I like to do is I like to use the shape of a pear. So I'll draw a circle like this and then a smaller circle on top. And this little shape of the pear, this is what I'm gonna say is the body, this idea of a pear shape. What do you guys want this pear shape to do? What do, you, what do you want this paired body to do? Dance. What kind of dancing? Like what kind of dancing? Like Cumbia. How does that even look? Make <laughs> <laughs> sure do a split or like have open legs up. Or anything. 
I mean, for cumbia, I have to look at a picture. So what does cumbia look like? Punch. A what? Punch. Punch? Punching somebody? Yes. Well, yeah, definitely too. Let me just look at the cumbia one. I don't even know how to spell cumbia. Cumbia dance. Dance party. Cumbia. Cumbia. Okay, let's see this. What did I get? This is not it. Oh what is it for dance? So when someone is dancing, of course, they're doing all this crazy stuff, you know, a lot of twisting and turning. And that's pretty cool. That's very, very cool as far as this idea of dancing. You know, and again, a lot of these moves are kind of, you know. So <clears throat> as far as this idea of this pear shape, again, the idea is that this, the head will be here, and of course the shoulders will be here. Um, I don't know what we could do. Um, I guess we could try to make them look like they're, they're, they're I guess, kind of like doing a little something. So the reason why I erase the pair is because I have to, I'm gonna to have to twist the body a little bit first. We'll go to the pear shape of the little block. But again, as far as the idea of the head is already established. And of course our head's gonna be much, much larger than the body itself. But again, if the person again is doing like, again, a little, a little something, a little dancing step. So the idea is you know, the first thing to do is concentrate on the spine. So again, when you imagine, again, you of course imagining, closing your eyes, what do you imagine the, 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 the spine to go? So again, their, their hips are going this way and I'm gonna bring it back out this way. So they're gonna have a nice, again, a nice long slant. As far as the shoulder, this is gonna drop lower and this one's gonna be a little bit higher. So I draw this one bigger and this one smaller to create the sense of depth. So bigger and then smaller. I can connect them, you know, very, very softly with a soft line. As far as the hips, I'm gonna draw the hips very, very high and very, very low. So this one's gonna be higher and this one's gonna be lower. So just like the shoulders. As far as what is this arm gonna do? Maybe it's gonna do a little snapping action. Maybe, I don't know. It might seem like snapping this way or snapping this way or snapping. I kind of like it going this way. So again, this will be the bicep. It's not as long as the line. I draw a little circle for the elbow. Usually when I draw these lines, I try never to draw a straight line. I always try to give it a little bit of curve. So going this way or going that way. But usually I, I usually curve inwards for the bicep and I usually curve outwards for the, uh, the forearm. Gonna curve out for the forearm, a little bit toward the wrist. As far as the hand, I'm gonna treat it right now like a little bit like a square shape. And again, that's where it's gonna stay. As far as this hip here, you know, it's gonna have a long line. This is for the for the femur, for the long part of the bone. And we'll go here. And again, I'm gonna draw a little circle here for the knee. And then from here, it's like, where does this leg go? Well, I'll make it going this way. So again, to the inside like this. And again, a little bit shorter, but again, as far as the length. And from here, I'll draw the foot. It's gonna go this way. As far as this leg here, I'm gonna go make it going backwards like this. You know, kind of like the same length, you know, but a little bit shorter. And this one will go like this. It will be for this knee. And as far as this one, I'm gonna kick this one up higher. So again, if this one is so long, well, I want this, this one to be kind of relative to that. Maybe I'll draw the, the foot a little bit more extended outwards. As far as the other one, maybe I'll go a little bit higher, you know, like this. And then again, this will be the elbow. And this will go up higher, again, pulling to the inside. And the other hand will be over here somewhere. So as far as looking at it, it looks pretty cool. I, li I like the way it's moving. I like the way it's turning. You know, it has a sense of overlapping this leg in front of the other leg. So again, definitely this body is very, very, you know, it has a really nice sense, a really nice sense of, again, animation. 
As far as what I usually sometimes ask the students, so, well, do you want to make it look a little bit more realistic or do you want to play with a potato shape? I mean, with a pear shape? And so it's up to you, you know, it doesn't matter. But again, as far as the ideas of the hips, you want to really bring out the hips. But again, I'm going to draw whatever's in the front. So I'm going to make this, again, two lines, one line here and one line there. That's to create the thickness of the, the, the bicep. From here, I'm going to go a little bit thicker here and go a little bit thinner there. I'll draw a little elbow here, it will pop out. We'll go back to the front like this. It gives you a sense of the thickness of the forearm. But again, the forearm is moving forward. So again, it overlaps. It's foreshortening the bicep a little bit here. As far as the hand itself, again, like a hand, you know, the thumbs to the inside. So you're probably not going to see it. Uh, but again, just very, very simple movements. And again, how would the hand be, you know? Well, maybe you can just kind of just draw a little finger here, maybe a little finger there. Maybe we'll keep the fingers together. Let's make it easy, you know, for now. As far as the thumb, it probably would stick out just a hair on this side, like right there. As far as the upper torso, if that's next, I would say, well, when you want to think about the chest, you think, of course, of your, uh, of your, uh, <clears throat> your, your, uh, what am I going to say? Uh, what's this part called again? The rib cage. Okay, so again, as far as the rib cage, again, this is the center right here, a little bit above, you know, so again, this is the spinal column, I'm gonna go a little bit higher, and I'm gonna draw a little nice little curve. Well, this little curve here, this is the idea of the rib cage, and it goes out, and it goes back in. You know, as far as the rib cage, it goes behind here, and it comes back on this side. So again, it gives you an idea, this sense of roundness gives you a nice feel. As far as the hip is right here like this, so again, this is gonna go like this, it's gonna curve around. As far as this part here is gonna go, continue to go downwards like this. So this part looks really, really good. I like the way this is stretching downwards into the body. As far as here, I think I'm gonna struggle here just a little bit, but maybe not so much. As far as this part here, you know, again, this is gonna be, of course, from the shoulders and it goes upwards into the neck. As far as the chest, you know, this goes in front of everything comes back downwards and of course the other shoulders over here and pushes upwards too. This is gonna be for the bicep, goes back this way, maybe a little bit thicker in the back. The, the elbow, and of course, this is probably way too long, you know, but you know, I was in the mood, so I just kind of made it that long. As far as here, this would definitely be for the bottom, the butt, and again, this stretches out as a nice thick mass and it goes towards the knee. When you go towards the knee or the elbow, it always gets a little bit thinner. As far as this part here, you know, again, this is a part of you know, the leg that comes downwards. So again, if I erase this and I erase this and I erase that, you know, there it is. As far as this part here, again, it's gonna get a little bit thicker, it goes a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker, it goes a little bit thinner. It goes around the ankle, it goes around, and then this goes to the front, this to the front. As far as this part here goes around, again, this will go around the hip on this side. It goes back inwards. This part goes under. This part goes around this way. So it goes this way. This part goes around this way. It goes this way. It's starting to come around. Can you guys see the figure or no? You guys are drawing, aren't you? But can you see how the figure worked out from that little, <clears throat> little pencil line? So again, it looks like he's like moving, running, it could be dancing, you know, it could be having a like, you know, imagine him with a guitarra right here like this, a big guitar. Oh, super fancy. The other, the other end of the guitar here. You know, he's strumming here. And of course, he's over here like this with, a, with the neck of the guitar. And he's yelling out to people, you know, you know, to dance, to have fun, to you know, partake in the party. Can you imagine that or no? So this is the guitar. Yes. Here. Good. So again, you kind of get that feel. So again, as far as doing a simple frame, you could definitely do a frame, but again, the idea is to animate it, 
and it, and it makes fun. I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, because again, you, you're able to play with the multiple parts. You just have to kind of work with your imagination, thicker at the bases and thinner at the joint. And again, I put all the joints where I needed them, you know, right here, right here. So again, when I do draw, I try to draw around them. But again, as far as muscle groups, you know, you guys will eventually take, you know, maybe drawing two, maybe event drawing. And again, you have an anatomy class that they put a lot of effort into having everything done by the muscle groups and so forth. But I don't like to do that too much. You know, I like to use a lot more imagination and a lot more creativity. And, you know, I don't need the laws. I don't need the rules. But when something looks weird, I kind of wonder why. <clears throat> but anyways, that would be like the idea of a body. As far as linea, we give her a little pear shape. We're gonna give her a pear for the round. And as long as you say, you're making me fat. You think I'm making you fat, Lydia? No, I just got a big head. Oh, giant head. But I love it. Great. So here's the idea of the, of the pear shape and we'll kind of kick it out a little bit further this way. So again, I draw more lines than I need, but again, I'm just trying to figure out which lines would be better. As far as your legs, I'll draw the legs going this way. So the way, as far as it, the way it works out here is that this part here will be her hips. We'll see how it works. We can do one leg this way. One leg the other way. I think they run out of space too quick. But most of you guys are really good at doing all this kind of stuff. You guys are really good at drawing cartoons already. I'm just trying to figure out how I can fit everything in here. Is there anything else about you, Lydia, that most people think that maybe, are you a big eater? Do you like a lot of food? Uh, I guess, yeah, well, no. Your favorite restaurants? Uh, well, I just ate some Taco Bell, so that's what I'm thinking of. Trying to think about what to do with your body. A clown suit. But it doesn't go with your face. But that's what you have. A big clown.
As far as the hands, what are the hands are doing? Sure. Um, Maybe you have a pencil in the hand. Maybe. Maybe you could be the killer clown or the balloons. My God, that's scary. No. I could. I could be. Oh. <laughs> you could. You are the creator. Right. Well, the nice thing about the balloons is give you an opportunity to add colors. Hay talento, solo hay que haber apoyo. <ríe> Pero está yendo mucho mejor cuando le pongo lo más oscuro. Pero ves todo ese amarillo. That's always a But Andy always finds a way of. Uh, oh, no.
They look super cool. Well, now I need the color. So here I just erase all the pencil. So as far as applying the color, again, it's very, very limited amount. We're not gonna to try to do too much. I will still put emphasis on the actual picture just to give an idea as to where to apply the color. As far as a very, very safe color, and the color I'm gonna use mostly is the, the cream. Something like this, or something a little bit more neutral. I'm gonna go a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of pink, a little bit of brown too, a light brown. Yeah. So just with these, you can do quite a bit. Now, as far as the the paper, I'm gonna use the white of the paper. Now, normally we've been, of course, like getting rid of the color of the paper, is because we've been doing a lot of layering. So in this case here, we want to put more emphasis on. The use of line, we want to make sure, that, or at least a balance, so that there's a nice use of line. And also, of course, the, uh, also a little bit of color too. So as far as all the color, I'm gonna try to transition the color and go a little bit darker and go a little bit lighter. And again, the drawing's already there, it's already all set up. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker where I normally would do more shading with a light brown. As far as the brown, I maybe say, well, maybe not use it yet. If I can get away with not using it. So here's a little bit more of a darker cream or darker peachy color. I definitely think I need to use a little bit of brown to bring out the eyes a little bit. So I'll use a little bit of brown as well. And a shade a little bit around where the lines exist. As far as your eyes, you know, I guess I'll put a little bit of brown in there too. A little bit underneath the eyes, the eyelids. As far as the, the little pink part, as far as this bright pink color, you can use it anywhere that you want to. But again, you can use it for accenting or for a little bit of soft blending. But normally around the eyes is where I'll put more emphasis. Uh, I just have a little bit of blue. I use a little bit of blue also. Maybe just on the part of the eye just a little bit. That's enough for that, for that blue. As far as the rest, again, you can use you can leave a lot of areas of white, or you can just kind of get rid of a lot of white. So here I'm holding the pencil more on the side so you get more coverage. And again, I just want to get rid of some of the white. So again, just going very, very soft using the white of the paper. I do have highlights, which is up here on the very, very top up here, but I may use a pink to bring out the highlights. As far as the outer edges, I do want to put a little bit more push on the outer edges to try to get a little bit of a transition going. That'd be nice. I also left a little bit of light reflecting on the outer edge. As far as what is light reflecting, some of you guys did that in your, when you guys did your sphere, you did a little bit of light reflecting underneath the shadow and that always looks really, really good. So I'm doing that a little bit of that light reflecting along the outer edge a little bit there. As far as underneath the nose, again, it's just a lot like the eye. There's always a lot of shading underneath the nose. So I always come back underneath it and just kind of give it a nice little layer. If I can get away with just this enough, then I would do that. But again, if I see all this, it's like, oh, you, you put a little bit further. So again, I might as well go a little bit further here too. So again, I'm just kind of just climbing the ladder a little bit. Went off with a lighter and I'm going a little bit darker. And then I'll go a little bit darker than that.
As far as the tip of the nose, I'm going to start off again with a little bit of the lighter cream. I'm going to do a little bit of that light reflecting as well. But for the nose, I'm going to bring out some more of the pinkness. Sir, the picture I see after I'm wearing is that fine or should I try to like not put a hat? One more time, please. The picture I'm wearing, I'm wearing a hat. Should I try to ignore the hat or is the hat fine? Oh man, you're you're breaking up quite a bit. Uh, I heard that something about a picture and a hat. Did you say a hat? Uh, text, text, text it. Put it in the in the in the text. You're breaking up. Can you just text it to me on the uh, on the chat? You guys have been chatting a lot. There you go. Okay, the picture I'm working from, I'm wearing a hat. There he goes, nice. So the picture I'm working with, I'm wearing a hat, should I try not, not dry, draw the hat or is it fine? Uh, definitely, I mean, uh, the hat is pretty cool. The hats are always better when of course they're at a profile. And the hat's coming straight at you. It looks very, very abstract. You know, it's like when you look at a pair of glasses from the profile, they look weird. You know, all you see is the edge and you really don't see the glasses. So hats are always really cool, especially again, when they're a little bit off to an angle. So again, if I had someone that was gonna draw their hat, I would usually have them turn to the side a little bit, turn to the left or the right. But again, if you are gonna draw from the front, the idea is how do I get that part that, move, that moves towards me. That's part that you probably want to sketch it a few times. But again, if the hat is a part of that person's personality that they always wear it, definitely you can't, you can't get rid of it because then people wouldn't recognize the person. So definitely the hat would definitely be a big thing, you know, especially if that's what the person, that's what the people recognize them by. So I'm, I'm assuming that Lydia wears her sunglasses on the top of her head a lot. Maybe that's the way people recognize her. Yeah, I like the way they do. So again, like uh, Alejandra, so again, if you don't wear the hat very often, you know, you don't have to. But uh, again, if the hat is again, it's a part of your personality, definitely I would draw the hat, especially if it has a angle that you feel like you can definitely accomplish. Because sometimes a hat angle could be very abstract or you know, so if I don't pull this hat off, you know, it's not gonna look very good. So I'm using a little bit of the pink sometimes and I'll go back with a white color pencil and I'll soften it if I don't like the texture of it as far as the blending. If I don't like the blending, I'll soften it up a little bit more. But definitely you can see a big difference between it having some color and no color at all. But again, this is nowhere near to the amount of effort that normally of course you would do with a realistic portrait. The realistic portrait, you know, you'd have a fistful of colors when at the same time you say, well, maybe I can minimize, maybe I can minimize so on the, uh, on the YouTube, I do have a, a portrait that I did last year of one of the students in person. She was wearing a mask, so I didn't have to draw her mouth, but I did put a lot of color into it. 
you know, as far as later on, as far as trying to do something special with a little bit of color reflection. So I did that one. I didn't want to do another one of the uh, the one that I did last time in Zoom, but I did I did it a little bit too big. But I would like to redo it again, but of course in a smaller proportion. But this time, of course, give myself a size to work with. So last time I didn't give myself a size to work with. I just started off with an eye with here, but by the time I noticed, it was really, really large, which is fine. But again, it's a mountain. It's a mountain when you have to, of course, do a lot of detail that you really can't see very, very clearly because again, the picture is not uh, very, very clean. But uh, I'm gonna try that one one more time. Uh, when I do a little bit more time, maybe over the weekend, I'll give it another shot. As far as assignments that are pending, we have all the assignments that again, we had from the very, very beginning. And again, all those assignments, again, they, there's there's to give you a sense of a, a good, well background, a good background. All those drawings, again, are reinforced with you, of course, stressing very, very good technique as far as good blending, good transitioning, good variety. All those things are should be almost automatic. And as long as you do good technique, no matter if the proportions are a little bit off, it's always going to look pretty good because, again, the technique is solid. The technique is very, very solid. So again, I'll have a nice look to it. I'll have a nice finish to it. So again, those are some of the things again that I just stress on. We just spent a lot of time in the beginning of the semester working on your rhythm, working on the way you hold the tool. And again, if I see you again years from now, you know, I want you to, of course, to have that sense that I can hold the tool very, very different, very, very uniquely. A lot of people will go back and revert to holding the pencil the same way. So again, the idea of holding it again with your tips of your fingers so you can get really nice movements. You get some really nice long strokes, but if you hold it very, very tight, even though you feel very comfortable with it, you're gonna be tight. And that tightness is gonna show a lot within your work. So again, treat the pencil again, like a tool and hold it differently. You know, sometimes you hold it like this, sometimes you hold it vertical. You know, as far as, is this good for anything? Well, I can't really see how this is good for anything. Again, just the tiniest of movements, but again, it's not good. You know, putting your thumb on the top, you know, I really can't see anything where, where that is a good thing. You know, just a habit that you picked up as far as when you started writing, and it just kind of stuck with you. So again, it's just another way of holding, but again, you want more circular motion. So when I hold it like this with my, the tips of my fingers, I can rotate very, very quickly. I can rotate very, very fast. I can do some very, very nice soft blending. And in this case here, I'm using a combination of my shoulder and also, of course, my hand movements, you know, kind of moving like this, very, very circular. But again, I'm, I'm really, really pushing very, very fast. That's the first layer, go back to the darker layer. As far as the darker layer, they do try to add them like a shadow. I go underneath the hairline, try to push it off to the left or the right, a little bit darker wherever I can, especially if I need to add a little bit more contrast or feel like I want to add a little bit more depth to it. Now, as far as the other assignments that are pending, I did add some assignments there, and those are two. Those are two assignments that you guys can easily do on your own. And that is to do a shoe drawing and a spoon in a glass of water. So the spoon in a glass of water is homework for you drawing the, the resaca. And that would be, of course, having a nice glass you put in your front of you like a still life, but make sure it's transparent. You know, again, it can be kind of concave. It can have ridges and angles. And then you put some water in it halfway and you throw a spoon in it. As far as the spoon is going to distort, it's going to shift, it's going to change as it goes through. So your job is to look at the distortions, try to bring them out within the drawing. And you can do it in graphite if you want, or you can do it in colored pencil. As far as a shoe drawing, it's a life-size shoe. So again, some people say, well, how about if I use infant shoes, little baby shoes? Well, I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. But again, you want the shoes to be life-size. And you really want to bring out, that would be a lot like the paper bag, the, the shoe, because again, it has a sense of mass. It has a lot of texture. It has patterns. And in this case here, again, you want to make sure that you angle the shoe where you can actually see inside the shoe, just a little bit, if nothing else. But that gives you a sense of volume. So as far as these two last assignments, uh, 
I was going to tell you, well, we can, you can either do these two last assignments or you can do an individual assignment that you give yourself. That individual assignment will be something of your own choice. And that will be something that you would use for, you know, those two, two, uh, two grades. And again, as far as the scale of it, it could be this size if you want it to be. But at the same time, you know, it has to be serious. You know, you have to give it your best. And again, if you say, I really love drawing trucks. I love trucks and I want to make a truck as if it's, you know, I don't know, climbing the side of a, a rock formation. I want to draw the treads of the tires. I want to draw the mechanical parts. I want to make it look like as if it's defying gravity. I want to do something like that. So again, that could be, of course, that would be like the creative shape and form drawing. The creative shape and form drawing was all about you, of course, using geometric shapes, <clears throat> geometric forms. And again, you know, that's very, very similar to that assignment. So again, of course, you have to find some nice references and of course go from there, you know, do a little, you know, do your soft sketches and then from there come back, work it back into it, either all in graphite, you're gonna do it in color pencil. But again, that's, a, that's an option for you guys. So again, you can either do those last two assignments or you can do your own independent. And again, you can tell me, you can give me an idea as to what it is. Uh, but definitely if you have more references, more pictures of what you want, Definitely, that'll make it a lot easier to actually do the drawing. You guys understand? Yes. All right. Sir, I had a question. Go ahead. Um, I didn't go to class on Thursday, um, but for the landscape, can it be, does it have to have like a body of water in it? It has to have something with water. We have to try. We have to try to get this idea of water. And as far as the idea of a landscape, usually they always have, of course, uh, an illusion of depth. So again, within this depth, you have something's bigger, something smaller. But water is a very, very great thing. I, I know people shy away from it because it has reflections and distortions and stuff. But again, it, it can. It all it has to do is look natural. So again, a lot of people say, "Well, this is blue water. I'm coloring out blue." It won't look very good because again, it looks too artificial. It looks very, very artificial. And again, it doesn't look like, like the way it should. So again, uh, you can use any kind of pictures, but again, we do have a wonderful Tosaka. And again, it does have a lot of formations. It has a little thing like a bridge that goes over. And there's always nice wild animals. So again, it could be a, something of a crop. So again, like the pictures that I was taking, you know, the ducks, you know, it could be just that right there. It doesn't have to be the whole Rasaka. I says, well, you know, this was as well, that water looks pretty, you know, it looks like too much. But uh, this one, again, you can crop an area. So I'm going to do this. You know, I can handle that. This is going to be my foreground right here, the wood, little blades of grass, this greenness, transparentness. The ducks, I can barely see them, but maybe I can get some better pictures. But you know, I get that idea of the reflection, ideas of the distortion. So I think you guys can do it. You know, I definitely do think you guys can do it. And again, sometimes uh, the entire landscape can be very overwhelming. You know, all of you know, this, you know, seems very overwhelming. But again, you have this idea of space, a wonderful illusion of space. You have the reflection of the bridge and the water. You can actually see some of the reflections of the trees, you know, way over here in the background. You can see the reflections of the trees. As far as the sky, look how white it is and look how white the water is. So again, you get the idea of, you know, one to the other. And it makes sense after a while. Push it to get it this done. So, how are you guys doing with your caricatures? You doing fantastic? I think mine is looking pretty cool. It's coming out cool, huh? Good. So, you done in a little bit. We'll we'll share the we'll share the screen that way you guys can share your your progress. 
So again, as far as your drawings, you guys have been really good about posting your progress. Uh, I'll do an update to the list as far as what assignments I noticed that you guys are missing. So again, the, the goal is that everyone, of course, is very, very happy with the class, achieve the grades, achieve the grade that you, that you deserve. And of course, you know, appreciate this idea of drawing. And, and again, this is a very, very intro version to art. But at the same time, you know, you do achieve a lot of goals and definitely you can kind of move forward, you know, as long as, of course, you're learning and you become a little bit more creative. Um, definitely become a little bit more confident in what you do. And uh, there's a lot of goals for all those things. You know, you can keep setting your goals higher and higher. So for the lips, I'm just gonna add first a little bit layer, like all the others. And I'll kind of jump into the peak a little bit quicker. So the nice thing about the Sharpies is, is the Sharpie will hold up to the, to the Prisma color. Some areas of the Prisma color gets a little bit washed out, but uh, definitely it holds up pretty well. As far as the hair, definitely I would add some brown, some, I'd probably add a little bit of a, a brighter color. Maybe you could add uh, a little bit of orange, or this red orange, make it a little bit of red orange first. Again, just a little bit. Just to get and give it a little bit of something. Then I use some, of course, some brown. Sir, is this drawing going to count as the, the second portrait? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here I'm going over some of the black with the, with the, with the brown, with a nice sienna. And it looks even better with a little bit of brown. But again, it's also trying to work it in rhythm as well. Maybe a little bit of uh, orange. The orange, when it goes over the black, it just kind of makes it look a little bit more like, I guess like a little bit of an umber color. Looks good. It's not orange orange, it's more like a yellow orange. I add a little bit of blue to it. Just kind of give it like a little sense of highlight. The hair was the easiest thing to do. As far as everything else, so I need some work. 
As far as the glasses, maybe I can introduce another color to the glasses. Um, maybe I could go with my favorite. A nice lavender color. I'll blend it back with some white. Here a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, a little darker there. As far as the balloon, we have some bright colors. And use a yellow. Gonna stick with light colors. Very green. The green will contrast the red really nice. Another nice light color. Mm. Chartreuse. It's quite orange.
his pants. Another light color. I'll do the shoes. This is yellow on top. Blend back into the red and the uh, brown. Make sure I roll it, it won't get sloppy. I couldn't figure out what color to make the pants. Um, I'm gonna make it my favorite color. So in some areas I press, some areas I, I don't very much. So I, I did probably do some transitions. Transitions with the prism colors are a lot easier than the graphite because it's, it's just very, very smooth. I'll go a little bit darker here to make it seem like she has a bigger belly. Uh, transition going upwards.
Sorry, the shirt, I guess I'll go with a little, like a t-shirt, kind of a little more on the white side. This is a little Crayola pencil. I like that blue, it looks so good. It's Crayola. <laughs>
As far as these colors, you're just trying to create a little bit more movement behind it and also, of course, to get rid of the, the blankness of um, the background. Uh-uh. <sighs> 